shoulder pain is one of the most common conditions that bodywork practitioners deal with in their practice. Hello, I'm Noam and this is Nimrod. We will demonstrate for you a traditional Thai acupressure treatment routine for frozen shoulder. The treatment is based on a traditional point combination that treats not only frozen shoulder but also a number of other common shoulder disorders. Use this point combination in conditions of pain and restricted movement while raising the arm forward, sidewards or in horizontal adduction. A chronic or acute pain is located at the back aspect of the shoulder or at the front aspect or at both sides. At times, when there is pain only at the back aspect of the shoulder, you will need to use the back set of points only. When pain is only at the front aspect of the shoulder, you may not need to use the back set of points. In the majority of the cases, though, you will need to work both the back and front sets of points. There is often also pain when bending the arm behind the back. But if there is pain only while bending the arm behind the back and no pain while raising the arm, then you should use a different point combination. Different shoulder conditions should be treated by different point combinations. Find six very useful point combination treatment routines for shoulder disorders in the shoulder chapter of my book. For frozen shoulder, use routine 15 in page 82 in the book Thai Acupressure. If you do not have the book, you can download the entire shoulder chapter for free on the website www thaiacu.com For the best result, begin the session, when time allows, with a warm-up. You do not have to use Thai massage techniques. Use any technique that you are familiar with to massage the neck, shoulder blades and upper back. The first point is in the depression between the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid, halfway between the occiput and C7. Press as deep as you feel is needed and hold the pressure for 5 to 15 seconds or for as long as you feel is needed. Release pressure and proceed to point 2, on the top edge of the trapezius in line with the medial border of the scapula. Find a stiff and tender point, press downwards cautiously. This is an extremely useful point for all shoulder and neck pains and also for headaches. Press as deep and as long as you feel is needed, which would usually be between 5 to 15 seconds. Release pressure and proceed to point 3, which is the upper angle of the scapula point. It's the meeting point of the medial border of the scapula line and a line that runs above the scapular spine. Find the levator scapula muscle. Press not letting the muscle slip sideways. This is a stiff and very sensitive point that radiates sensations in all directions, including the head. It is the most useful point for shoulder and neck pains, for all headaches and also for a few arm conditions. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel is needed. Release pressure and proceed to point 4, directly above the axillary crest below the lower edge of the scapular spine. Press medially. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel is needed. Point 5 is three fingers below the lateral tip of the acromion, in the depression between the median and 
posture your deltoid. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel needed, but no more than 15 seconds. Point six is one finger above the axillary crest. Press upwards. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel is needed. Point seven is just medial to point six. Measure one finger above the top end of the axillary crest and press medial against the lateral edge of the shoulder blade. It is a very sensitive point over the teres minor muscle. Point eight is below the scapular spine and lateral to the medial edge of the scapula. Find a shallow depression in a bony angle formed by the scapular spine and the medial border of the scapula. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel is needed. Point nine is one finger below point eight, just lateral to the medial border of the scapula. Hold the pressure for five to 15 seconds. Point ten is one finger below point nine. Find a shallow depression in a bony angle formed by the medial and lateral edges of the scapula. It's also three fingers above the lower tip of the scapula. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel is needed. Point 11 is one finger from point eight on a line to the axillary crest. It is at the upper third of the scapula, halfway between its medial and lateral borders find a very sensitive point. It is also halfway from the upper angle of the scapula point to the axillary crest. This point radiates in all directions including to the front aspect of the shoulder. Point 12 is just below the lower tip of the scapula and slightly lateral find a thin slippery muscle. Point 13 is just lateral to the lateral edge of the scapula. One finger above point 12. Press towards the lateral edge of the scapula. Point 14 is one finger above point 13, just below the axillary crest. Press towards the edge of the scapula. Point 15 is the midpoint of the medial border of the scapula. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel is needed. Now that you have completed one round of points, check if the front set of points is also relevant. You will find it very relevant in most of the cases. Point one is just below the clavicle, medial to the caracoid process, in a deep depression just before the shoulder. Press medial to the caracoid process. Point two is on the borderline between the chest and the shoulder, halfway between the clavicle and the axillary crest. Point three is at the axillary crest. Press the muscle upwards. Hold the pressure for as long as you feel is needed. The yellow point four is one finger lateral to a line drawn from the axillary crest upwards to the clavicle. Level with point two. Place your thumb 
on the borderline of the chest and the arm and press laterally on the tendon of the biceps onto the humerus. Do not apply deep pressure or do not use thumb pressure at all if this point is too tender as that may create a strong reaction. You can use a gentle palm pressure instead. If the yellow point four is not effective, try the pale blue point four instead. It is halfway between the axillary crest and the lateral tip of the acromion. Press in the depression at the medial border of the anterior deltoid. The yellow point five is just above the axillary crest. One finger lateral to a line drawn from the axillary crest upwards to the clavicle. Place thumb just above the axillary crest and press laterally on the tendon of the biceps onto the humerus. Do not apply the pressure or do not use thumb pressure at all if this point is too tender. You can use a gentle palm pressure instead. If the yellow point 0.5 is not effective, try the pale blue point 0.5 instead. Located above the axillary crest. Two fingers lateral to a line drawn from the axillary crest upwards to the clavicle, pressing the depression at the medial border of the anterior deltoid. Repeat thumbing these five points one more round. When necessary, begin a second round of the back set of points. Repeat thumbing these 15 points as long as improvement occurs. Do not repeat more than 10 times. Stop working if the points become sensitive. Use the amount of pressure that suits your client. When time allows, you can also use the following optional complementary procedures. In the first procedure, push the elbow horizontally as far as it will go. Do not push beyond the point of pain. Press point 5 as you push the elbow and release when pulling the elbow back. Repeat for a few times. Push the elbow and press the point. In the second procedure, cautiously place the forearm on your shoulder and hold it straight. Be careful not to raise the arm beyond the point of pain. Work the outer arm along the humerus, from the shoulder to the elbow and back. Using your fingertips to roll the biceps away from the arm bone with one hand and then to pull and roll the biceps away from the bone with the other hand. Repeat for a few times. This is the end of this treatment routine. Your client will usually feel much better right at the end of the first treatment. However, at times improvement will be noticed only on the next day. When the condition is acute, it is helpful to repeat this same treatment daily until recovery. With a chronic condition, treat once or twice a week. I teach traditional Thai acupressure in courses around the world. Learn of my upcoming courses on the website www.thaiacu.com